Hey, what's going on guys? It's Kusen Tech here and today I'm gonna talk to you about what are retro achievements and how you can use them so that you can have another motivation when you're playing retro games such as GBA, Game Boy, NES, SNES and such and such and such and even to PS1 so far is the latest one so remember that every link you will need will be in the description so you ready? you sure? let's go Okay, so let's start by explaining you what exactly are retro achievements. I told you in the intro that they are kind of something that gives you a motivation to play when you're playing retro games, but that comes in a form of trophies. Same as the PS4 trophies or the Steam achievements. So in order for you to actually use that feature, you will need to do a few steps. I will cover them here. But let me tell you that you can use them with RetroArch or with the standalone emulators that you can find in the Retro Achievements website. So let's start. Let's go here to this website. And what exactly we're gonna do here is simply to create an account here, then to use the credentials of that account in RetroArch. That's because it's a different system that works together with RetroArch. So first, you can go here, click here in create a new account. You choose your username, your email, choose the same email, your password, click this to say that you're not a robot, then click here. Then you will receive uh, some kind of email that is to validate your account. And once you have your account, you come here and log in. Once done, if you want, you can customize your account, you know, to add some kind of avatar and a few more things that is here in my pages, then settings. You can give it a try to read all of this. You can change your account, change your email, and even you can delete the achievements that you have unlocked. Can be one or can be every achievements of the game that you have unlocked a few. Now, if you notice here, this is an account that I have been using, and those numbers are points that you will earn when you unlock your achievement. Now, let me show you how that works. Go to my pages, then profile. So, if you see here, I have played a few games Mega Man X4. Street of Rage from Mega Drive, yes, Super Mario World, and so on. So every game that you play, if your account is activated, they are gonna appear here. And you will see the trophies that you can unlock. For example there, they gives you a brief description of what you have to do to unlock that achievement. And once you unlock them, they will give you points. For example, if you see here, this blue number means that I have 430 points, but here in this white number says that I have 793. What exactly happens there? That is because I had activated something called Hardcore Mode in RetroArch, and each unlocking gives you double points. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you how that works. But first, let me show you how you can delete a achievement that you have unlocked. If you see here, these ones that are not gray, like this, like the rest, is because I have unlocked them. But if I want to, I can delete them by going here, my pages, and settings, all the way down, and here, reset game progress, choose my game, I only have one. Then here, if you want to delete every achievement that you have unlocked, you can do so by simply choosing that, all achievements for this game, then reset progress for selection. But let me show you how you can delete one, a simple one. Mm, let's say, maybe this one, yes. 
Life up. Reset. There you see, it's gone. Let's go here to check. And it's gone. That means that I can go and play the game again and unlock the same achievement once more. And lastly, you can check which games have achievements that you can unlock by going here in games. You see the systems, the consoles, Sony, Nintendo, Atari, Sega, NEC, other, and so on. Let's say I want to check which PS1 games have achievements that I can unlock. Then I click here, PlayStation, and this will show a list of the games that have achievements that are kind of locked. So here you can see the game name and here the amount of achievements that that game has, the maximum amount of points that you can earn by unlocking every achievement and so on. So if you want to check a game to see which are the achievements, click on them and you will see the full list here And by the way, if you see this, that means that this achievement is kind of easy to unlock. You see that nine people out of nine people have unlocked it. But let's search for the last one. For example, here, two people out of nine people. That means this achievement is really hard. So there you see, you have easy achievements or difficult ones. All right, let's go with Retroarch. Let's go here to settings. Then in our achievements, turn this on. And you will see a few options that you can use here. First, use your username and password that you created here in this website. If you turn on the option that says hardcore mode, you will earn double the amount of points for each achievement that you unlocked, but in exchange, you will not be able to use save states, cheats, rewind, pause, slow motion, and all those features that Retroarch gives you that pretty much helps you to play better. I don't know, that's your call. But if you turn on this option, which I recommend, it's much better. Turn on that. Then here, leaderboards. This only works if you turn on this option, the hardcore. Turn it on. Leave this on. Achievement pages. Turn it on. So with these two options, with verbose mode, you will get some information when you unlock your achievement on screen. So turn it on. Then here in automatic screenshot, you will get exactly that, a screenshot when you unlock a achievement. So turn it on. Okay, once done, you can hit escape to close Retroarch and save the configuration. Then search for the game. Let's say Super Nintendo, Super Mario World. Yeah, this one. Then let's choose a core. Once here, you might be wondering which course does works with retro achievements. And that is a very good question. To answer that, let's go here to this website where you can see the core compatibilities. Which core works, which one doesn't, or what exactly do you have to do to make it work. So for example, we have a few ones, let's say for arcade, main, does not work, but this one do, find a burn, and so on. In short, if you see this mark, that means that that chord does work, but if you see a note here next to it, that means that you have to do exactly that in order to make it work. Let's check a few ones. Let's say, for example, um, Nintendo DS. All of them works, but look at this, Melon DS requires BIOS, this Mune requires BIOS, but this Mune 2015 does not need a BIOS. Game Boy Color, Same Boy, and so on. 
So, in short, the idea is the following. You come here and check which consoles are you planning to play, then check which course does works for you. So, once you have your course and your games, let's turn it on. I'll select this one, then hit run. So if you notice here, check 0 out of 63, hit F1, then come here to achievements, and here you can see which achievements that you can unlock and how you can unlock them. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to unlock these two. And there you go, that's the first one. That's a weird one. And there you go, that's the second one. Oh well, I didn't manage to. That's pretty much it for this video guys. I really appreciate you watching. Hit like if you like it. Hit dislike if you dislike it. But remember to leave me your feedback, or whatever you want, in the comment section. Remember, I will be covering more RetroArch related topics and other interesting stuff. And if you are interested in one of those, be sure to keep an eye on the channel. Thanks for watching guys, and see you in the next one.